We'd like to welcome Mike Bonanno to, to this portion of the show. And Mike has started a little company called Corpus 55. Mike, can you tell us what is the basic concept? Well, the basic concept for Corpus 55 is to try to approach the businessman or the business company, I should say, and make puppets to look like the individuals that they might be representing. For instance, if they're putting on some type of a sales show to get little idiosyncrasies of uh, that individual, that, that president or that vice president or that sales director or that sales manager, and make the puppet to look like those individuals, write a little script, go down to wherever that convention is being held, put on a lighthearted type of uh, puppet show for that company. Okay, wh where did the name Corpus 55 come from? Well, it's actually a corporation with puppets at the end, and of course, you and I both graduated in the year of 1955. Okay, thank <laughs> Even you. Even though you look younger than me. <laughs> when did you first start doing this, or the first time you tried this? Well, actually, when I was working for the Western Electric Company, uh, we used to put on two uh, uh, children Christmas parties. Uh, it was such a large event that we had to make two of them because we just couldn't fit all the children and the parents in, into our cafeteria. Uh, the morning show canceled out on us. We used to get Hans, the, the, the toy maker, and we'd get a few television personalities to come in and, and, and perform for the kids. And when we found out that um, this particular morning guest was not able to, to perform, we sort of panicked a little bit because uh, at that time, as you know, I play in a band also, and we would open up the, uh, the, the show with the, the Christmas carols and the Christmas songs for the kids, and Santa Claus would come in. And then the act would, would, would come on right after the band would, would perform. And we knew that the band just couldn't keep the kids' interest for the half hour that we, we needed to, to have for the morning show. So we, again, panicked a little bit. And I immediately ran down to the warehouse, got the biggest box I could find that could house maybe two or three people. Uh, we took it to the trades department. They immediately uh, painted it gray. We cut a hole in it. I went out and bought some puppets. I went home, took some of my my uh, Christmas uh, songs that, that were for my kids. Uh, we put it on a tape, drove it through a, a Bose speaker so that we can get good amplification, and we put on a puppet show. Uh, to be very honest with you, it was horrible, but we, that was the beginning. We started doing it that way. Uh, after, after that first year, we decided, what the heck, we can put on our own show. So we went out, and we really start uh, getting a little more serious about it. I start writing uh, some plays, some skits. I, I recruited some of the neighborhood kids. Uh, I had a friend who had his own recording studio. We would go over to his house. They would, we would, they would practice the skits, and then we would record it, pre-record it, and then we would uh, put it together uh, in, a, in the form of a puppet show. And, and it, to be honest with you, it started to get pretty good. <laughs> I think at this time, we're going to cut and show the people a cut of some of the, the puppets or the videos that Mike has done. And I remind you, these videos are amateurs, but they show you the concept. Now, I want to introduce a few of my key players so that you can sense their enthusiasm firsthand. First, my middle linebacker, Trekkie Dick Olmsted from Norwich University. Dick calls the defensive signals. What formations will you be calling today, Dick? I've done my pregame noodling peeled the onion back, and I've eliminated the tinky dots and concentrated on the big picture. That's great, Dick. Now let's switch to my nose tackle, Jim, the confronter ruling from Notre Dame. Jim, what's y'all's view? We don't need pretty faces. We need to win a game in the trenches here in the South, so I don't have to go north again. I knew you'd say it like it is. Now let's hear from our defensive ends. First, there's Ted, the amiable Marr from Harvard. Ted, how do you see it? Since I'm on the eastern side of this big field, 40% of the plays will be run in my territory. OK, Mike. Uh, what kind of functions can corporates be used for? I know you mentioned a few, but uh, would they, could they be used for like a political roast? Oh, sure. You could, you know, puppeteering is, is, is really a form of entertaining. It's, uh, it's, um, it's actually uh, 
stage, but you're not really looking at the audience. You, you are underneath there working the puppets with your hands. Uh, you can just about direct that to anybody. Uh, we have done Christmas parties for different uh, organizations. When I say we, my children and I, we, we, I wanted to get them involved, and so we went out and, and performed for uh, about three or four different companies. Um, we also have directed to like individual birthday parties. Uh, so just about anybody who wants, uh, wants to be entertained, uh, we, can, we can put on a puppet show for them, and we can custom design that puppet show to their particular needs. Uh, all they need to know, uh, all they need to do is tell me what they want, and then I can go out and do it. Okay. What's involved in preparing the, the show for a group? In other words, how are the puppets made? Well, the puppets are basically made, again, if, you, if you're really going to direct it to an individual company, you want the puppets to look like individuals within that company. You, you have a sample. Yeah, of we have right a sample, here. right. Uh, you, you need to possibly get a picture of that individual so that you can make the puppet to look like them. Now, this is just a basic puppet that where the mouth does not move at all. All right, and so if a person is talking, of course you want the hands to be going, and of course you always want to make sure the puppet's kind of like on an angle so they're looking down at the audience because usually the puppet box is a little elevated, and so on and so forth. And it's kind of a little easy to do this because you're not moving the mouth. Whereas if you took a different type of puppet where the mouth has to move, basically the same thing, except the hands aren't moving now, but you have what we call little, um, little hooks that will make the arm move. But here again, the mouth has to be really in sync with the tape, and that's where your practice comes in. But, but again, you can just about make a puppet look like anyone in a character type of style. Okay, I, I interrupted you there. Uh, how are these made? Uh, do you have somebody make the puppets? or? Yeah, well, actually, there's, there's two ways of doing it. The, these particular puppets were made, and, and, and I know a young lady who belongs to the Northeast uh, Puppet Guild, which I belong to, and she can make, uh, she actually does wonders with puppets. Uh, she can make them look, again, like the picture that you might give her if you're really trying to make a puppet look like an individual, such as we would want uh, during a business convention. Um, but exactly how they're made, I really don't know. Uh, I've never got into that part of it. Uh, I know that the, you, know, you just use whatever type of felt uh, that you can possibly find and put a little shirt and little hands on them and that type of stuff and uh, some eyes and they're on their way. I, again, I'm not really versed uh, on how the making of a puppet takes place. Okay, now in some of these uh, you talk about uh, finding out the idiosyncrasies of the person that you're going to be showing in the puppet show. How do you go about doing this? Do you have to interview people? No, usually, uh, and I did this uh, with the AT&T company. We put on a big show down in um, uh, 